All right, gang, here we are. We're in chapter 17 now. And in chapter 17, we're dealing with Windows resources on a network. Now, we've dealt with the connecting to and setting up a network previously. And in there, you learned how to create and manage a network connection. And in this chapter, oh, no, let's back up again. In the chapter about supporting network hardware, you also learned about networking hardware. Okay, now let's talk about this chapter. In this chapter, all right, we're going to focus on using a network for client server applications for sharing files and folders with network users and for providing cloud computing services. Now, security is always an issue. Now, it's a huge concern when we're dealing with networks. And in this chapter, you'll learn how to share resources on the network and still protect these resources from those who maybe shouldn't have access to them. We also will deal with security strategies um, in a future chapter. And we're not far, far off from that. And we'll, we'll focus on the security at a higher level then and some different tools and techniques that you can use to protect your network. Okay. Now, from there, let's jump into this. And when it comes to supporting client server applications, now resources that are available on a network might, they might include network services such as email or file storage or applications hosted by a server and used by a client. Client server applications you'll likely be expected to support they include Internet Explorer, which keep in mind it is no longer supported by Microsoft, but they're still using it, remote desktop, and other remote applications. You also need to know how to use group policy to configure quality of service for client server applications. And you also need to know how to link a data source through a network to database applications. Now, all these skills we addressed within this chapter okay so if you think back to that chapter connecting to and setting up a network now the client computer it contacts a server in order to request information or perform a task such as when a web browser it connects to the web server and requests a web page now, there's other types of server resources that exist on normal networks. Now, some of these servers are, you know, they're standalone servers, but often multiple network services are provided by a single computer, or servers might be embedded in other devices. Now, we call what these servers do, we call it their role. So servers have different roles. Now, for example, servers are sometimes embedded in router firmware, such as a, a Soho router providing FTP services, or in an operating system, such as a web server capabilities embedded in, well, let's say, Windows Server 2012. Now, each time any of these components is updated, and legacy technology present on the network must be taken into consideration, that, now that can result in a complex web of network resources. All right, so we've got a different, we got a bunch of different things that we may run into when it comes to the different types of servers or different roles of a server. Now these aren't all the roles, but we could deal with a mail server, a file server, a print server, a DHCP server, which is a dynamic host configuration protocol server. Now that's something we've talked about already. A DNS server. We also learned about that already. Now a proxy server. Now a proxy server, that works as a go-between, going between us and another server. There's also an authentication server, which authenticates users and computers on the network. And we're all fairly familiar with dealing with web servers and they host websites and serve out those websites and 
the pages associated with them. Okay. Now, when it comes to our different Windows resources on a network, one of the things we like to be able to do is to uh, store things over a network on a uh, server somewhere and store files so that we can connect to them from just about anywhere. Now that's commonly what we'll call cloud computing where we store some resource on a server and we can access it from just about anywhere. Now aside from that, we also have the ability to use what we call remote desktop connection. It's, it's commonly called remote desktop. And it gives users access to a Windows desktop from anywhere on the internet. Now, as a software developer, I think remote desktop is extremely useful when I work from home or from a remote location like eh, my home office. And I need to access a corporate network to support software that I may need that exists on that network. Now, using the, net, the internet, I can access a file server that's on the secure networks, and I can make my own software changes on that network. Now, remote desktop is easy to use, and it's relatively safe for a corporate network. Now, to use remote desktop, the computer you want to remotely access, or the server, must be running business or professional editions of Windows 8, 7, Vista. We're not going to deal with 10 yet, but the computer you're using to access it, the client, can be running any version of Windows. Okay. Now, one of the things that we deal with when connecting to the internet and, and something we have running on many of our computers is what we'll call a firewall and that'll help protect us from the outside world. Right. Now, don't forget we've got to deal with QoS and group policy. That's something we've dealt with to a degree. Um, We'll deal with it a little more, and you've got an exercise that will help explain that as you go through it. Um, one of the things that we deal with is, like I said, storing data across the network. Um, keep in mind the type of file system that you're using, and make sure that you are using file types or For example, if you're using FAT32, understand the, what the formatting structure is of the server that you're storing on. Most that we're going to see today will be NTFS. Okay. So from there, we'll go ahead and head on to Chapter 18. And I'll see you in Chapter 18.